But that's what I always tell people is that, you know, put yourself in my shoes. Like, I'm a kid from Heidelberg, and I have a freaking shoe boxes and shoe boxes of letters. You know, I'm a 15-year-old kid from Heidelberg, right? So, you know, tell me you're, tell me you're not going to get a little bit, you know, uh, like full of yourself, right? <laughs> so so I had to, like, you know, deprogram all these different things. Everything. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's ultimately just really addressing it talking about it as much as possible the more you talk about it the easier it becomes Mm -hmm. and that's you know that's what i learned through sports you know all those sports a lot of these guys who will you know try and take this advice are guys who who like basketball sports any type of sports analogies use those analogies you know work you know be open to criticism don't be afraid from don't run from criticism don't run from people who care about you Mm -hmm. you know so that's the thing is like just show up you know that's what I've just been doing with my path in this walk or whatever. Just I was just showing up, asking questions, being told, "Okay, you did shit here, you did shit there, but hey, like you, you have a little bit of potential," you know. So that's the thing is like I'm just finding the biggest holes in my quote unquote game as far as how I could better serve my people. I said before, you know, I went to um, a gathering of of like ten women, some couples. They all identified as gay women, right? And I'm literally just sitting there asking, like, when did you come out? What made it difficult? What what barriers did you face? How did your family accept it? And going same thing to my my friends who are gay, right? My males, you know, how did you come out? What what years did it hurt? You know what I mean? Like really trying to understand, like, because the more and more I ask questions and learn, which we all should be doing, mm-hmm. the more we're going to be able to interact with one another. So women could be asking these questions of things that have happened and creating that safe space for men. Mm-hmm. That's where we'll have progress when we actually ask questions and listen and just sit there and listen and like, you always think about that. You know, if we could have just so many dialogues of people just sitting down, having a conversation is being honest with one another. Like, Hey, I'm damaged. I've dealt with this. I've dealt with that, but hey, I'm actively working on it. So Hey, let's support one another. You know? <laughs> Nakbak Damon Bellholter. Honestly, it takes a lot of bravery to one, confront such difficult topics, and two, to speak on them. So I thank you for the open conversation and the important work you do for our communities. June is Men's Health Month. And frankly, I don't think we talk about men's health and wellness enough. Unfortunately, many of us who have grown up in Alaska know all too well the issues of suicide, substance abuse, and domestic violence in our Native communities. According to IHS, the American Indian and Alaska Native people have long experienced lower health status when compared with other Americans. Lower life expectancy and the disproportionate disease burden exist perhaps because of inadequate education, disproportionate poverty, discrimination in the delivery of health services, and cultural differences. These are broad quality of life issues rooted in economic adversity and poor social conditions. (sighs) But we do have the tools to combat these issues. It reminds me of a quote my uncle always says, we may not have it all together, but together we have it all. And if that quote doesn't do it for you, here's another. I love being indigenous. It's dangerous, but it's lit. (laughs) On another note, I'd like to introduce a partnership that has been percolating in the works for the last six months or so. Coffee and Quack is brought to you by Native Time. Native Time highlights the real Alaskan experience through multimedia productions. We are the creators of Coffee and Quack, Indigenous Future, and The Archive, a.k.a. Jackie Iglevuk Lambert, Howdis Brown III, and myself. We exist to continue the ancient art of storytelling today. We're a contemporary creative powerhouse located on the land of Denina at the Baskins. Basically, we do dope shit, and we do that by sharing your dope shit. To learn how you can be part of Native Time, visit our website, www.nativetimeak.com. 
and follow us on Instagram because we'll be launching soon. I'd also like to take this moment to address the civil unrest happening in our country and ultimately around the world. This episode was recorded last year before COVID-19 and before any of the recent Black Lives Matter protests. Native Time and Kafi and Kwok stand in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. We reject any and all insidious or blatant types of racism, including individual, structural, and systemic. So many people think that Alaska doesn't experience police brutality or violence, but that is simply incorrect. The following information was provided by Ruth Dan. According to Mapping Police Violence between 2013 and 2019, Alaska had the second highest rate per capita of police killings in all of the United States, and the second highest rate of police killings of Black people. In that seven-year span, Alaska police killed 41 people. Five of those 41 were Black men, and 12 were Native. No police officers have ever been charged in any of these killings. And these numbers don't even cover the deaths in Alaska's prison system, where at least 25 prisoners have died in custody. Thank you, Ruth, for putting this information out there. We share this information not to scare people, but to keep ourselves informed so that we might be able to work together towards justice. No justice, no peace. Now more than ever, we need to uplift and honor Black voices. Make sure you sign petitions, vote, make donations, and follow Black creators. This call to action centralizes Black lives. An injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Take care, Kwaktis, and continue fighting the good fight. The music for this episode is titled Work by Two Essentials, a.k.a. Tyler Young, who will be featured in part two of this episode, and he has a story you need to hear. The Coffee and Quack intro music was created by Jesse Darling, and the coffee for this episode was supplied by AK Coffee Company. Work hard, play hard, and rest well. I'm Alice Kaniklen, over and out.